Namaste children. How are you all? I hope you are fine. In the last class we discussed the quadratic equations. What are quadratic equations? The general form of a quadratic equation. Finding solutions of quadratic equations using three different methods. That is factorization method, method of completing the square and the third one is the quadratic formula. The last concept we studied it is nature of roots. So in this class we are going to discuss a new chapter that is circles class 10 unit 10. Unit 10 circles chapter. So here we are going to study the major concept of this class uh, this chapter it is uh, tangent a circle and its properties. Tangent a circle and its properties. So before starting uh, our main topic of the circles chapter we will discuss uh, the terminology related to the circles like what is a circle, what is chord, what is a radius, what is the diameter, what is arc, what is a segment, what is a sector. Then we will discuss uh, the concept of tangent. So, so what we are going to discuss in this chapter, the main topic it is a tangent or to a circle and uh, its properties. Now we will discuss introduction of this chapter introduction of this chapter so what is the introduction of this chapter here it is the introduction of this chapter is uh, what is a circle now what is a circle a circle is a geometrical figure which is obtained by the combination of uh, points infinite points which are at a fixed distance from a fixed point it is known as a circle you see for example you take uh, all these points uh, which are at equidistant from a fixed point uh, then by joining these points uh, we get a geometrical figure this geometrical figure is known as uh, a circle and this fixed point is known as center of the circle center of the circle center of the circle it is and then what it is this figure is known as a circle so this fixed point is known as center and this fixed distance is known as what? This fixed distance is known as radius of the circle. Radius of the circle. So what is radius of the circle? The fixed distance from the center of the circle to any point on the circle is known as a radius of the circle. So how many points we have considered here? It is infinite points. So from center of the circle to we can draw radius to all the points. Therefore infinite radius will be there. Now, <coughs> Sorry. What is a chord? A chord is a line segment which is obtained by joining uh, two points which are there on the circle. You see here, let A is one point and B is another point. By joining these two points, uh, we will get a line segment. That line segment is known as chord. Chord is defined as the line segment drawn from one point to another point on the circle is known as chord of the circle. So chord of a circle is defined as the line segment drawn from one point to another point on the circle is known as a chord. Now what is diameter? Diameter is the longest chord. Diameter is the longest chord which passes through the diameter is the longest chord that and it passes through the center of the circle. So it is known as the diameter of the circle. So what is diameter of the circle? The longest chord of the circle is known as diameter or the chord which passes through the center of the circle is known as diameter. So here the chord is dividing the circle into two parts. Each part is known as what? This part and that part it is known as segment. Segment of a circle. So two parts. Here the diameter is dividing the circle into two equal parts. And each equal part is known as what it is? A semicircle. So this part is known as a semicircle. Semicircle. So what we call this portion so here, I told you here, this portion is known as, uh, this is known as this portion. It is a segment of a circle. Segment of a circle. Segment of a circle. And that is known as a semicircle, which is divided by this uh, circle is divided by the diameter into two equal parts. Each equal part is known as a semicircle. Now, and diameter is the longest chord. 
uh, that passes through the center of the circle. How many diameters we can draw? Again, here also we can now draw infinite number of diameters like this we can draw. So, infinite number of chords we can draw and infinite number of uh, diameters also we can draw to a circle. Now, what is the arc of a circle? A part of the circle on that is we take point A this is and this is point B. So this part is known as arc of the circle. This is arc of the circle. So what is arc of a circle? A part on the a part of the circle from one point to other point on the circle is known as arc. As this arc AB is less in this length, therefore this is called minor arc. And the length this is the if you consider AB, then BA is the major arc. We will discuss in detail in the areas related to circles chapter again. So this is also a, an arc, but it is its length is more. Therefore, this is major arc. It is major arc, and that is minor arc. This portion it is minor arc, minor arc. <coughs> now. What is a sector? Sector of a circle. See here, draw a circle, sector of a circle. So uh, this is the center of the circle, draw its two radius, draw its two radius. Now this portion is known as what it is, the sector of the circle and this is the angle of the sector. What is a sector? A part of the circle which is formed by joining two end points of an arc which is formed by joining two end points of the arc with the center of the circle. So this is uh, two end points of the arc AB and these two end points are uh, is joined through the radius. This part is known as what? Uh, it is sector of the circle. Sector of the circle. What is sector? The, uh, the, the part of the circle which is obtained by joining the two end points of the arc with the two radii. The two radii of the circle is known as sector. Again, its area is less, therefore it is minor sector and its area is more and that is known as major sector. So all these are the properties of us. that is the terminology related to the circle. So circle is a, a combination of points uh, which are at a equidistant from a fixed point that is known as circle. That fixed point is known as center of the circle and that fixed distance is known as radius. So diameter is two times the radius. This is one diameter and this is the other diameter. By joining those two radius, we get what it is a diameter. So diameter is twice the radius or double the radius or radius is half of the diameter. Radius is half of the diameter. This is the terminology related to the circles. Is it clear? Now we will discuss uh, relationship between a line and a circle. A line and a circle. If you are given one line and one circle, what are the possible cases we will get? We will discuss in detail. See, this is a circle and one line is given. So let this is the line. What do you understand from this figure? This is here. There is no common point between the circle and the line. Here the line is non-intersecting line. It, here it is. The line is non intersecting line because there is no common point to both the circle and the line. So it is uh, uh, the line, take this line as a P and it is Q. So line PQ is uh, known as what? It is a non intersecting line, non intersecting line with respect to the circle, with respect to, with respect to circle. This is a non-intersecting line as it has no common point. Now, case 2 if you discuss, uh, take a circle and draw a line which passes through the circle. Now, this is a line PQ. It is intersecting the circle at two different points. It is intersecting the circle at two different points. Here, two common points are the P and Q. This line PQ is known as, PQ is known as what? is known as the secant of uh, is known as secant of a circle or secant uh, secant to a circle so secant to a circle secant now what is secant of a circle the line which intersects the circle at two different points at two distinct points is known as 
secant of a circle. So the line which intersects the circle two distinct points is known as the secant of the circle. Here no common point and here two common points are there. Now the third case it is draw a circle and draw a line which intersects or which touches the circle at only one point like this which touches the circle at only one point like this. So this point it is intersecting at only one point here the PQ. So line PQ is intersecting the circle at only one point and this line PQ is known as uh, what we are discussing from this chapter is known as tangent to a circle tangent to a circle tangent to a circle now what is tangent to a circle the line which touches the circle at only one point the line which touches the circle at only one point is known as a tangent to a circle now what are the three conclusions we can uh, conclude from these three cases so if a line and a circle are given, they may intersect or they may not intersect. They may not intersect means the line BQ is non-intersecting line with respect to the circle. If they intersect, they, it may intersect at two points, distinct points or at only one point. If that line intersects at two different points, then that line is known as secant to a circle. If the line intersects at only one point, then that line is known as tangent to a circle. Tangent to a circle. Do you find any other case other than these three cases? No, it is not possible. It is impossible to have any other cases of a line and a circle. It is only it may intersect. If it intersect, it may have two common points or it may have only one common point. If they do not intersect, it is non-intersecting line and if it intersects at two distinct points, it is known as secant to a circle and if it intersects at only one point, it is known as tangent to a circle. Now the main, uh, what we are going to discuss uh, in this chapter is, what is tangent to a circle and what are its properties. Now what is tangent to a circle? The line which touches the circle at only one point is known as tangent to a circle. Where do you identify this tangent to a circle in our general life? See, in olden days we used to pull the water by using a pulley. By using a pulley. See here, like this we will have a, a pulley is there. Here and here a rope will be there like this. So this here, if you observe here, this point, this is touching at this one, at only one point. And this is known as a tangent, a pulley to pull the water from the well. And also we use, you see, you see a bicycle, uh, 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 what it is, a wheel, we have these forks, all these forks represents what, the radius of that wheel, so this radius, if you draw a line at each forks, we will get what, uh, a tangent, if it is moving, if it moves on the road, we will identify this tangents to the ground, which are with respect to that wheel, cycle wheel. So now we will discuss what are the properties of tangents, how many tangents we can draw to a circle which is a point on the circle and a point outside the circle and a point inside the circle. So we will discuss. Now tangent to a circle. What is tangent to a circle? A line that intersects the circle at only one point is called tangent to a circle. So see the figure, so a line which intersects the circle at only one point is known as tangent to a circle. See I have drawn it here. So this is known as a tangent to a circle, let PQ is a point, PQ is a line which intersects the circle at A, at A, point A. So A is the common point for both the circle and the line PQ. Here the line PQ is known as tangent to a circle. This is known as tangent. Now my question is how many tangents we can draw to a circle which is from a point on the circle. To a point on the circle how many tangents we can draw. It is only one tangent we can draw to a point on the circle. You see here if, you, if I consider this is the point A. So to this point I can draw only one tangent. And if I take one more point B, to this point I can draw only one tangent. 
or if I take one more point C, so to this point I can draw only one tangent. So at most to a point on the circle we can draw only one tangent. Only one tangent. We can draw to a circle at only one point. At one point we can draw one, only one tangent. Finally, how many how many tangents we can draw to a circle? We can draw it to a circle infinitely, infinitely many tangents. Infinitely many tangents. So you take a circle to this circle, how many tangents we can draw? Like this. We can draw infinite number of tangents we can draw. So infinite number of tangents we can draw to a circle. How many we can draw? Infinitely many. Infinitely many. Infinitely many tangents we can draw. Infinitely many tangents we can draw to this circle. Uh, to finally we can draw infinitely many circles we can draw to a circle. But at one point, at one point we can draw only one tangent. Only one tangent we can draw. Now what we call this point uh, which is common for both the circle and this what it is the uh, circle and the line. This point uh, is known as what it is? Point of contact. Point of contact. Point of contact. So what is point of contact? The common point uh, that is the intersection point of uh, tangent on the circle. Tangent to a circle and the circle is known as point of contact. Point of contact. Now, if we locate uh, its center, let the center is O and join O to A. What we call this as the radius. What we call this as a radius. What is radius? The line segment drawn from center of the circle to any point on the circle is known as radius. Now, what is the relationship between the radius and the what it is a tangent? Do you find any relationship between a radius and this what it is a, a tangent at point of contact? How they are related? They are perpendicular to each other. They are perpendicular to each other. Now we will prove how they are perpendicular to each other in the form of a theorem. So how many tangents we can draw to a circle at one point? It is only one tangent. But overall to a circle how many tangents we can draw? Infinitely many tangents we can draw infinitely many tangents we can draw now parallel tangents how many parallel tangents we can draw to a circle parallel parallel tangents how many parallel tangents we can draw to a circle to a what it is well a secant is given here it is let this is uh, what is this it is a secant uh, let pq is a secant of the circle so to this P, uh, secant of a circle PQ, how many we can draw a parallel tangents? We can draw C here to this line P. So here we can draw one tangent which is parallel to PQ and here we can draw one tangent, one tangent to the, so this are, these are two tangents. So how many we can draw parallel tangents to a secant? Two parallel tangents we can draw, two parallel Two parallel tangents we can draw to a to a what a secant. How many parallel tangents we can draw to a diameter from both the end points of the diameter of a circle? So let it is a, a circle and this is the center of the circle. If you draw this is diameter to this through these two end points we can draw only two tangents. How many tangents we can draw? Two tangents we can draw. So in an overall to a circle, how many tangents we can draw? Parallel tangents we can draw. It is to a given line. It is two parallel tangents we can draw uh, to the circle, which are parallel to a secant. Parallel to a secant. Is it clear, children? What is a tangent? How many tangents can be drawn to a point of, on the circle? How many tangents we can draw to a circle? And what is we call the common point of the tangent on the circle which is known as point of contact point of contact and how many parallel tangents we can draw to a circle which are parallel to the secant of a circle is it clear children this is now we are going to discuss the relationship between the radius of the circle with the tangent at point of contact which is perpendicular we will prove that by using a theorem is it clear
Now, theorem 10.1. The tangent at any point of a circle, the tangent at any point of a circle is perpendicular to the radius. So this is point, a point on the circle and through this point P we have drawn a tangent xy. Now at this point the tangent xy is perpendicular to the radius, is perpendicular to the radius at the point of uh, contact, through the point of contact. That means we need to prove here what OP is perpendicular to xy, OP is perpendicular to xy at P. It is perpendicular to xy at point P. So what the tangent is given, the tangent at any point of a circle is perpendicular to the radius, uh, uh, radius to the radius through the point of contact to the radius through the point of contact so we need to prove the radius op is perpendicular to xy the radius op is perpendicular to xy now see here so what is given here it is in this uh, uh, given uh, a circle with center o a circle with center o with center o on a tangent xy on a tangent xy at point P point P <coughs> drawn uh, to the circle drawn to the circle now what we have to prove TPT to prove that TPT to prove that or you can take RTP required to prove so we prove that we need to prove that OP is uh, perpendicular to what it is xy ob is perpendicular to xy how do we prove it so for this proof so let us consider a point q on xy on xy let us consider a point q on xy so this is point q on xy and join o to q join this now if we observe here, point Q is there outside the circle, am I right or wrong? It is there outside the circle. Why it is? Why it is outside the circle? Because it is there on the line XY. So point P is the point of contact to the circle and that is the common point to the circle and what it is? That tangent. So definitely the point will be outside. If the point is inside, if you consider, then what? This xy will now it will become what a secant, not a tangent. If this point Q is there inside somewhere, then we will get a line which intersects the circle at two different points, which is known as secant of a circle. So that is not possible. So definitely point Q should be on the line and it should be away from point P. Away from point P. Now join OQ. Join OQ. OP is the radius. Compare OQ and what it is uh, uh, OP. Which is greater here it is OQ is greater than the OP. Why? Because as Q is uh, uh, on the line and which is away from P. Away from P. Therefore that line segment length will be more than this uh, OP. So we studied in the lower classes that always uh, the, the uh, perpendicular line will be the shortest length. The perpendicular line will be the shortest length. Therefore OP is less than OQ or OQ is greater than OP. Hence OP is perpendicular to XY. OP is perpendicular to XY. For this proof, how do we prove? Let consider, let consider, consider a point, a point Q on XY other than, other than P other than P on the join on the join O to Q O to Q O to Q join O to Q so where we find this point Q point Q must be point Q must be lie outside the circle must be lie outside the circle outside the circle why it lies outside the circle if it lies on the circle then xy will not be what it is a tangent why xy is a tangent at point p so it is not possible if point q lies inside the circle if it lies inside the circle if point p lies 
point is a point q lies inside the circle inside the circle if it lies inside the circle then then it will become a secant if it lies inside the circle somewhere it here is there for example and here it is there point q is that here inside then this x x y will become what the line will passes through this point q means like this it will be there uh, like this it will be there so then what it is intersecting the circle the two different points then it will become what a secant so if the point q is there inside the circle it will become what a secant not a tangent not a tangent if point q lies inside the circle then it will become it will become it will become a tangent it will be, sorry, it will become a secant it will become a secant not a tangent not a tangent that's why the point p a point q will lies outside the circle on the line now if you observe this so observe the figure the length oq oq is longer than longer than the radius op longer than the radius op that is oq is greater than op length of oq is greater than the length of radius op length of radius op it is possible for all the points on the what line xy except for the point p since since it is uh, possible it is possible for all points uh, for all points uh, on the line x for all points uh, on the line x uh, on the line on the line x y except except uh, for point p for point p it is possible for all the points on the line x y except for point p and therefore point for point p therefore therefore op is the op is the shortest distance op is the shortest distance op is the shortest distance from point p from point p to the line xy to the line xy to the line xy this will be the shortest distance uh, from point b to the line xy among all the distances uh. so therefore we studied uh, the shortest distance is always perpendicular to the line hence op is perpendicular to the what it is uh, the line segment uh, the line xy at point p we know that we know that the shortest distance the shortest distance the shortest distance is always perpendicular is always perpendicular is always perpendicular is always perpendicular to the line to the line therefore op is perpendicular to xy therefore op is perpendicular to x y so like this we'll prove it by using the concept of uh, taking a point uh, outside the uh, circle if it is inside the circle then that uh, tangent will become what a uh, secant uh, it is not possible so definitely the point will be outside the circle so if the point is there outside the circle then the length of op oq will be greater than the length of radius op then what it is uh, here that if it, if it, if you use uh, this for all this uh, any point on the circle you see here any point on the circle so if you use this for any point on the circle uh, take a tangent let this is the tangent and uh, this is the center of the circle this is distance see observe here if you draw the lines from different points on the circles what about this distance all these distances are longer than the radius this is the what it is a radius all these distances are longer than the radius therefore oq is greater than op oq is greater than op 
and we know that uh, uh, OP is the shortest distance. Why it is the shortest distance? As all these points are there outside the circle, their lengths will be more. And we know the shortest distance will be always perpendicular to the line. Therefore, OP is uh, uh, perpendicular to the XY. OP is perpendicular to the XY. Now, always the tangent is perpendicular to the radius uh, at the point, point of contact. Here, here, this is we proved here, radius is perpendicular to the tangent uh, xy at point P. Its converse statement states that uh, the, the tangent drawn to a circle at any point uh, is always perpendicular to the radius. It is perpendicular to the radius. Radius is perpendicular to the tangent and tangent is also perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. This is the proof we proved here. I hope you understand. And now we will discuss uh, a few questions. Now, exercise number 10.1, question number 3. A tangent PQ at a point P of a circle of radius 5 cm meets a line through the center O at a point Q. You see here, the radius is uh, OP is the radius and PQ is the tangent drawn to the circle at point P. And this O will pass us through a point Q, which meets the Q, therefore this is OQ is given 12 centimeters and we need to find the length of PQ, we have to find radius is given 5 centimeters and OQ is equal to 12 centimeters. Then we got a triangle, what kind of triangle it is? A right angle triangle. Why it is a right angle triangle? Because the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent at the point of contact. So to find PQ, apply what? Pythagoras theorem. Then we can find the what is uh, the length of PQ. What is Pythagoras theorem? In a right angle triangle, square of the hypotenuse is equals to sum of the squares of other two sides. Sum of the squares of other two sides. So from the figure, it is uh, from the figure, from the uh, figure, it is uh, OP is equals to what it is? 5 centimeters and OQ is equals to 12 centimeters. Now OP is uh, perpendicular to PQ from theorem 10.1. Theorem 10.1. Therefore, in triangle, in triangle uh, POQ angle P is equals to 90 degrees. Hence, it is OQ square is equals to OP square plus PQ square that is by Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem. Now we substitute those values. OQ is 12. 12 square is equals to OP it is 5. 5 square plus PQ square that is equals to 12 square is equals to 144 that is equals to 5 square it is 25 plus PQ square. Now transpose 25 to the LHS we get 144 minus 25 that is equals to PQ square. <coughs> 144 minus 25 is equals to what you will get today, sir? 119. 119 we will get that is 119 is equals to PQ square. Transpose square to the side will get PQ is equals to square root of 119 centimeters. So we will find the length of PQ by using the concept of what? Theorem 10.1 and Pythagoras theorem. Sometimes uh, they will give you radius and this PQ will be given and they are asking you to find the OQ. In that case also we will apply the Pythagoras theorem and we will find the OQ. Sometimes OQ will be given and PQ will be given and they are asking you to find the radius. In that case also we will find by using the Pythagoras theorem. Is it clear children? I hope you understand today's concept. And uh, uh, today's homework point it is uh, homework. Today's homework it is exercise number 10.1, question number 1, question number 2 and question number 4. So your homework is question number 1, question number 2 and question number 4. Thank you very much.